welcome. What a lovely audience. Okay, so let's start here. Here's what you need to know about two small businesses. Economy Candy, which will come up on screen, is an 86-year-old New York institution that wasn't doing so well online. Its online sales were not so sweet, pun intended. But it turned to Facebook and Instagram to change all that. Their product tagging features sent online sales through the roof. Um, EconomyCandy.com started to see orders from around the world for things like chocolate-covered gummy bears and online the business is flourishing. Meanwhile, Miko, which you'll see coming up somewhere, Miko Products is a wellness company that needed to accelerate growth. Um, so they turned to Walmart's ecosystem to do just that. They started listing on Walmart Marketplace, huge, tapping into Walmart Marketplace's huge customer base, items like massage chairs and humidifiers, and then use Walmart's massive fulfillment services to ship orders directly to customers, saving both time and money. So if you think about it, the larger picture here is that today's small businesses are more and more becoming tomorrow's growing brands and the big guys like Meta and Walmart Business and Walmart are driving that in so many ways. So they're helping all the 33 million small businesses in the US like you scale and level the playing field with digital platforms that are helping to help them scale growth. And many of the resources, and I don't think a lot of people know this, are free. So I'm so pleased to welcome Ashley Hubka, Senior Vice President and General Manager of Walmart Business, which is a new platform for small businesses, and Kira McCoy, Senior um, head, of small business, head of Small Business Advocacy for Meta, which of course is the parent company of Facebook and Instagram and WhatsApp. So welcome to both of you. Let's welcome them. Yeah. So I just wanted to start by kind of painting the business landscape and what's, how things have changed. Um, uh, we're going to start with you, Kira. What, what do you see as the opportunities that small businesses, businesses have today that would have been unimaginable five years ago um, that that are leveling the playing field with big businesses and that are that essentially have been enabled by big business platforms as well as technology and digital technology. Sure, absolutely. Can you hear me okay? There we go. Um, technology is advancing at such a rapid rate. We were just talking about um, backstage. Last weekend, I took my very first driverless car ride with my daughters from a birthday party to go home. It was like a, a very crazy experience, something that I would never have imagined five years ago, but five years from today, it might be a, a very normal thing. The thing about when technology advances, though, it really democratizes the ability for small businesses to be in spaces that might have traditionally been reserved for bigger businesses, or certainly businesses with bigger budgets. Um, when I think about today, for example, you know, you've got technologies and companies like Shopify, for example, that allow any business to set up an e-commerce website, or Canva, for example, who and very small business has the ability to have a creative agency in their pocket. Um, Square has enabled the businesses to process transactions, you know, anywhere in the world. And then, of course, companies like Meta, you know, we have spent time giving businesses the ability to advertise and market and tell their stories in cost-effective and, and scalable ways. So it's really, really incredible I, I, when this technology is advancing. And I would say there's one piece of technology that is sort of taking center stage right now for good reason. Can anyone guess what that might be? Oh, AI, oh, yeah. yes. 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 I am so excited about the opportunities and potential for AI and what it's going to mean for small businesses. Um, if you're not using AI, every business right here across the country, across the world should be thinking about how do you leverage AI to automate some of your business processes to figure out how to refine your strategies, like use it. Um, it's only going to get better and it's going to help the businesses um, and your businesses grow. So I think that's going to be the next major opportunity that we're seeing. We're already seeing it unlocking incredible potential for small businesses um, and how we're integrating AI into some of our ad products, you know, better ad delivery, um, better targeting, better results for businesses. So 
Yeah. It's fascinating because AI is one of those technologies where you're seeing the immediate change as opposed to all the bells and whistles. There's been so many technologies that have just been sort of come, come and gone, but we're seeing immediate results. Um, so what comes to mind for you, Ashley, in terms of the, the, the larger business landscape and what's leveling the playing field for small businesses that we, was inconceivable five years yeah. ago? I would key on the same <coughs> excuse me, word that, that Kira used, which is democratization. We're seeing that with tools, with technology, and we're seeing it across all kinds of sectors. So she gave a number of examples, but also in finance, in HR systems, HR activities as well. Um, when you then think about um, the idea of consumer grade. I think if you went back some number of years, you know, what you had as a consumer was less than what you had as an enterprise. And I think we've almost flipped that switch now and enterprises are seeking to have apps and tools that are consumer grade. That's a compliment. If things were to work in business processes as well as they did for a number of the consumer things you do on your smartphone, that is really enabling and empowering. And so when I think about Walmart, we are growing together with, our, with small businesses, and we do that by operating as an ecosystem. So I use that to illustrate a few areas that I think are also being democratized and available to small businesses. So one example is really just retail platforms, Shopify, Walmart Marketplace. So these are ways that small businesses can now extend their reach, access more traffic, access more customers, and simply sell into much larger markets than they could on their own. I think secondly is access to logistics platforms. So the ability to have others deliver or fulfill for you. And so if you think about um, those two things, there's Walmart Marketplace, we have Walmart Logistics um, that is offered through Walmart Fulfillment Services or Go Local. And then I think the third thing is also advertising platforms. We talked a little bit about um, obviously the, the various platforms that sit under Meta, but we're also seeing retail media. And that's a way for sellers on a marketplace to reach again those potential customers and amplify their voice. That's something that we see a bunch of um, customers taking advantage of. And then the fourth thing that we're doing specifically as Walmart business is really just making sure that small businesses as well as nonprofits and other organizations have access to the assortment they need at the EDLP, everyday low prices that Walmart scale can bring in the ways they want to buy and the ways they want that delivered. So you kind of put all those things together. How do you access more customers? How do you extend your physical reach? How do you extend your advertising reach? And how do you just have what you need to operate very seamlessly? That's the kind of things that I think now are just getting platformized that were not available in the same way previously. So essentially running a business and advertising a business is now becoming the big, the big business tools are sort of becoming accessible to small businesses, essentially. Um, so I'm curious about like the pain points, like that we're all, every business has pain points, but the, what you're seeing, um, Kira, as sm the small business platforms, you have something like 200 million businesses use Meta's products and services. Uh, what, what comes to mind as the big pain points that they're facing and how you guys are solving for them. Sure. So I'm in a lot of Facebook groups with business owners. Um, get to talk to them every day. It's very fun. I also happen to live, uh, luckily, in an area with um, a lot of small businesses around me. So I'm getting a pretty good pulse um, about what sm small businesses are thinking and feeling. And I'd say the two things that I hear most often are, number one, access to capital. That always tends to be an issue continues to be an issue, especially uh, for women-owned businesses and minority-owned businesses. And the second thing that I often hear is time. And I'm going to focus on the latter one. There's just not enough time in the day to do everything that it is that you need to do. Um, when you're the CEO of everything, it's really, really tough. And this is why I get so excited about AI, because I think it has the ability to give businesses time back. And not just give time back, but allow you to uh, work on, uh, who knows, spend your mind working on new things that could grow your business to the next level. Um, and so I would say that the, the other thing when it comes to time is oftentimes businesses, you know, you have to prioritize things. Things are going to fall to the wayside. But do not deprioritize investing in your education. I'm sure it feels like every year there's like a new technology or a new platform or a new format or a new something that you have to learn. And what I would say to you is it's so important to 
with the time, the limited time that you have to spend, spend some of it investing in your education. You do not want to be the business who's running around putting flyers up um, as your only marketing when you've got competitors <laughs> running ads to people's phones and shipping products across the, you know, the whole entire country. And so Meta is actively thinking about how do we give businesses time back. And so from an AI perspective, we're starting to very much build it into our products, whether it's in our ad delivery system. Um, we really want you spending less time creating ads and tinkering with your ads and spend more time getting back to what you're doing best, which is running your business. Um, so we have a new Advantage Plus shopping campaigns um, that you literally just with a click of a button can set up like 150 different pieces of ad creative and let, let the AI figure out who it should target. You don't have to worry about that. And then in terms of education, um, if you are interested, you know, Meta offers hundreds of free courses for small businesses to, or any business size to learn about how to leverage all the different things that our platform has to offer, whether it's Instagram and Reels or uh, advertising, whatever it might be. And so um, go to Meta Blueprint, take some of those courses, whether you're just getting started uh, or whether you're very advanced. I haven't taken this course, but I hear that the data analytics course is out of this world. And it's got, so it's got something for everyone. Um, so yeah. And just to, to follow up, those resources are on your site, right? Yep. And there, there's online training workshops for basic and as well and really sophisticated. Correct. And it's accessible to all you all in yep. the room. Um, tagging on to what, what um, Kira said. So Walmart business, launched this year in January. It was built on, based on customer feedback. Um, and I'm curious, you've said that's, that you've heard from small businesses that inflation and supply chain are their two, no surprise, biggest pain points. What, how are you solving for those pain points for small businesses? Yeah, very fair. As Walmart business, those are two places that we've focused. So we did a survey earlier this year. It was consistent with the feedback we've heard over time. But 55% of small business owners tell us that inflation and costs are a barrier to growth. So really, the heart and foundation of Walmart business is bringing the scale of Walmart to small businesses through EDLP. So that's really fundamentally where Sorry, we start. Every, every everyday, everyday low, low prices. prices. <laughs> EDLP, everyday low prices. So that's really where we start. A second piece where we're leaning in in terms of helping with those cost savings and inflationary challenges in this environment is really around spend visibility. So how do we give businesses, in this case our Walmart Business Plus members, more visibility to what they spent? who spent it, on what categories, in what, in what time period, and this allows them to make better, better budget decisions, to enforce or put in place buying policy decisions. So that's a second piece around cost. And then the third I'd, I'd state is rewards. So through a number of our manufacturer and supplier partners, we offer opportunity for all of our customers to earn rewards, and then we offer additional opportunities for Walmart Business Plus members to earn incremental rewards. So this is just a way to kind of make your hard-earned dollar go further in a difficult economic environment and to fight inflation. Um, the second place that we've really leaned in is around supply chain. So again, mm. here we're taking the best of Walmart in terms of our assets and capabilities and applying them to serve small businesses. So I think you know many of you have a Walmart nearby. The really amazing number that maybe not everybody knows is that 90% of the US population is within 10 miles of a Walmart store in this country. And so that yeah. reach, that proximity, is really, really critical for people and small businesses to be able to get the items they need, whether that's walking into the store, it's pickup, it's delivery from that store. Um, Another thing that we've leaned into for supply chain disruption, so to give small businesses reliability, predictability, is subscriptions. So simply the ability to automate those things, those items that you know you need very regularly to operate your business. And again, in prior research, it's coincidental that's the same number, but 55% of what small businesses buy is planned, routine, repeating, and regular. And so how do we kind of give people confidence that those items they need to operate are going to be in the break room, they're going to be in the storeroom, they're going to show up when you need them through a, a subscription and an automation. And then the last one that we've begun to build into this year is more and more items that businesses can buy in bulk. So to buy in larger quantities, 
to buy in, in packs in order to be able to just you know, have the peace of mind, ensure that they are in stock. And we recently were talking to a business that's part of our ongoing Walmart business consumer panel, and what we heard from them was as they've gotten more comfortable with this the ability to rely on Walmart's supply chain, they have stopped ordering as much in advance. They order just in time, and that's allowed them to free up some cash to reinvest in other parts of the business. So our focus you know, really initially is on how do we help with cost savings, fighting inflation, and ensure people that they have a reliable supply chain backing them and backing their business. And the businesses are also leveraging your massive scale, right? And, and so there is a, a tangible absolutely. cost savings. Absolutely. Let's, let's get a little into the details and talk about what's working, right? What's working. So, um, Kira, in terms of what you have, the 65, 7 million people are expected to buy a product or service via um, Facebook um, or an Instagram second. Um, what are you seeing from your vantage point? What are the services, the tools, the resources that are driving a return on investment for small businesses? Sure. So, People do business with people, right? And we are continuing to invest in ways that allow small businesses to tell their stories in authentic ways and connect with their customers. Right now, I would say 50% um, of people spending time on our platforms are consuming video. That's what they're doing right now. And so we're continuing to invest in reels, um, which allow businesses to kind of, kind of create these fun videos um, and, and tell their stories and, and share their products. Last week, we recently announced some new features to our real products. So for example, you can create a reel and now just the ability to swipe left to send people directly to your website. So we're gonna continue to invest in that. The other thing I would say is that people love to interact with businesses through messaging. We're seeing a big uptick in, in business messaging. I'm one of those people, I, I often, if, if I'm on Instagram or Facebook, I'll message a business and ask them a question. It's a really great way to kind of build a personal connection. And I'll say that if businesses can get back to me, I'm more likely to buy from them just because they've answered my question, it feels authentic, uh, so on and so forth. So continuing to invest in business messaging. The other thing I would say um, is invest in uh, communities. We're continuing to invest in communities. So Facebook, Meta, we offer a ton of different communities for small businesses. I hear all the time how lonely it can be to be a small business owner. And when you get business owners like you all in the same room at the same time, it's like a sigh of relief where it's like, oh, it's my people. They know what I'm going through. Um, and so we, we want to be able to create space and uh, give you the opportunities to meet with other business owners. They can be some of your best sounding boards, some of your best coaches. Um, there's a community that I help operate called MetaBoost US. Please join it. I'm in there. We're there to answer your questions, provide education and resources. Um, but it's also a great way to connect with business owners and learn from each other. So, you know, the best thing you could do to kind of get that return on investment is like invest in yourself, invest in people, um, and invest in the trends, which is what we're seeing right now, video and messaging. And, and, and cavort with your peeps, right? So some of mm -hmm. these are also uh, offline, in-person meetings. Yeah, so yeah. we, some of these, so we, we have a lot of online communities, yeah. but please go find them offline too, right? Um, maybe it's not in the Facebook group where you find your best folks, but go to your local chamber of commerce and meet businesses there. Um, I think that's a great way to meet people. But yeah, we see people starting, they build a relationship online and then they find out they're, you know, live pretty close to each other and then they'll start meeting offline, which is the best. So for um, Ashley, for Walmart, from your vantage point, huge vantage point, biggest retail in the world, but also with all these ecosystems that are not just retail. What are you seeing that's driving a concrete return on investment for small businesses? Um, thanks for the question. Uh, Walmart business is a new, as, as Barbara mentioned, we, we launched in January of this year. So it's a new omni-channel experience really tailored for small businesses. We built it around three ideas. One, how do we help you simplify and save money on your business purchasing? Two, how do we help you stay in control and in stock? And that we really heard loud and clear as we've talked to small businesses across the country, this desire to really be in control. And then the third is to create efficiencies to operate and to grow. And so we knew that we have, we knew before we started Walmart business that we have millions of businesses already shopping with Walmart in stores and online. And we created this new approach in order to really be able to 
serve the unique needs of businesses, both in terms of what you buy and how you buy. And so as we've built out our tools, it's in service of that. So some examples are, uh, we started with the most, really the most basic thing you need is a multi-user account. How can you add multiple members of your business, multiple employees, use that purchasing power of the organization, share a payment method, have visibility to what everybody spent, share a list of what you think you need for that next event or this next client that you're about to serve. So that was the, the starting point. On top of that, we've built a number of other tools that start to generate you know, broader returns. So we now have an app, and that enables you to do, I mean, you're all here today, right? You're on the go. You are not doing business nine to five, sitting in front of a computer at a desk. You're doing business you know, throughout the day and in lots of places. So how do you manage your business, set up your account, monitor your purchasing, all of those things on the go? And that also enables that really rapid curbside check-in when you go to pick up something in a store. We also have been focusing on some of these peer-to-peer -peer opportunities. We call it Walmart Business Advance. We started with, we did a, an initial webinar, and then last month we did an in-person event in Orlando to bring together small businesses, nonprofits, experts in that community. And in a really nice way, another place where we're creating some of that is, is a Walmart Business Plus community for our members. And one of our, our outlets or formats or ways of convening that community is actually also through Facebook. Um, we also offer access to great third-party services that, again, help create those efficiencies for your operations and for your growth. So examples could be, uh, we work with Angie. If you buy something from Walmart Business, we can help you get it installed and assembled because you don't need a TV. You need a TV working on the wall of your conference room. <laughs> you don't need some new storage from your break room in a flat pack. You need it assembled where you can use it, right? And that may, that's probably not your best use of time as a small business owner and leader. Another example is we partnered with True Network Services to offer technology, right? Technology services. And so not every small business has a help desk, has a full IT department. So this is an opportunity to say, hey, I bought a laptop, for example, I need it set up, and you can choose to have that done virtually, or you can choose to actually have somebody come on site and walk you through it. Um, and then the last one I just maybe touch on again is Walmart Business Plus, which is a membership aspect. You can shop Walmart Business with a free account and access a great deal of what we have. And then you can access more opportunities and more benefits with a, with a membership. That enables you not only to access the kind of spend analytics we talked about or rewards, but also free shipping with no minimums, free delivery from that local store, which can be you know same day. So you don't have time to run out and do something. You need that item or that product to come to you. Um, when we think about return, maybe the way I would key on this, we had um, a couple of businesses with us and our leadership team last week, a couple of local businesses in Bentonville, Arkansas, Missouri area. One of them is a business that serves veterans and first responders. And they've started using Walmart business to bring to their facility, their ranch, all of the groceries they need to serve meals, home cooked meals three times a day wow. to veterans and first responders who are there for, for a number of of courses and, and opportunities. And that's saving them five hours a week that they now, instead of going to the store and shopping, they can funnel back into serving these really deserving communities. So sometimes the ROI is gonna be on strictly on money and sometimes it's gonna be on time, which is itself incredibly valuable. Yeah, what Kira was saying, the time, yeah. the time saved. Um, everybody's probably thinking about holiday or you should be thinking about it. So Kira, what, what comes to mind as to what small businesses should be thinking about to, to drive growth this particular holiday selling season? Yes, so they're calling this potentially the first AI-powered holiday season, um, which is kind of fun, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> um, yeah, I would say, you know, if, if you're using Meta, one of the best things you can do um, is try out some of these Advantage Plus products. Again, the holidays, you are strapped for time. You're doing a lot of different things. You've got events going on, like you're running sale, all the stuff. Um, we want any time that you spent on our platform to be the best minute and best dollar spent, which we need to earn. Um, and I would say we're seeing really cool things happen with these Advantage Plus campaigns where um, take a broad targeting approach to this. Don't spend all this time figuring out exactly like the interests and the demographic, like let the AI do that for you. Um, and 
there's a, a company, Rothy's, which I'm sure some of you have mm. heard of. It's a women's footwear company. They um, started using this Advantage Plus campaign, and historically, they had only been targeting women, because it's a women's shoe brand. Um, but then the AI helped discover an entirely new audience of men who were actually buying the shoes for like the women in their life, so like the mom or their daughters or whatever. Um, so it's a really cool way to unlock and find potential new customers at a time when it's really important um, during the holiday season. Um, so yeah, I would say this is going to be an AI holiday, and I cannot wait to see what happens. A uh, couple things, I, if you haven't already, I would say start early. <laughs> Whatever you are positioning, the ways in which you are trying to serve others through your business for the holiday season, we just we know it's ramped up much more quickly. You can see that online, you can see it when you go into stores. Um, so I think being out early and communicating that to your customers is really important. I think the second thing is we're seeing a really big emphasis when we look at our consumer research on family, gathering, food, and so the ways in which you can tie what you do to those themes and the broad desires of your customers to really engage in those activities and those things that are meaningful in those respects in the back half of the year, I think is a, is a um, second idea. And then the third one is, you know, I, I would say really tactical and practical. Like if you're gathering, if you're celebrating as a business, if you're getting together with your employees, if you're rewarding them for the year they, you've had together, the hard work you've done. Walmart business is a great place to get all those things you need to celebrate, right? And so we're, we're really excellent at the seasons and that maybe you wanna decorate your office, but that's also one thing we bring to the table that, that not all of our, your alternatives might is fresh food. So, you know, not only do you gather with food with your family, but that's often a part of how do you celebrate as employees? How do you celebrate as a business? And what do you do that is a meaningful part of your kind of business and professional community? So that's what I would add. Thank you. Okay, let's, let's quickly go to some audience questions that we have here. Christine Corday from Madera, California asks, what does it take, um, Ashley, to get a product sold at Walmart and become a Walmart supplier. Supplier, okay. quickly. Two, two options. Um, one, you can apply to become a seller on our marketplace, Walmart Marketplace. So that um, you can do that online um, from our corporate site, corporate.walmart.com. You can access the opportunity to to apply to become a Walmart Marketplace seller. And the second is we're we're past the deadline for this year, but every year we run a open call, which is an opportunity for small businesses across the country to apply, and a, a large number of them are selected to present their products or services to merchants at Walmart and at Sam's Club and have the opportunity to sell in our stores. Um, and I would really encourage any of, those, any of you to look at that for, for next year. It's a big part of our commitment to source um, products that are manufactured, assembled, uh, et cetera, in, in the U.S. Okay, thank you. So Kira, Philip Walker from Long Beach, California asks, how will AR, VR impact small businesses' customer engagement and marketing? Yes, uh, hot topic. I would say it's still pretty early, um, but I, if AR is probably the best opportunity right now for a small business, especially if you have a product um, that you can try on. So I've seen companies do really cool things where you can try on sunglasses in the app or try on makeup or see what furniture is gonna look like um, in your home. And so at the end of the day, this is really just gonna be more ways and more platforms, more surfaces for you to be able to kind of share your brand story and get your business in front of, in front of potential customers. 10 seconds. Same thing. <laughs> 12 seconds, let's talk as long as you want. Um, I think. <laughs> Those two are true. I think the other opportunity that we experiment with at Walmart is we use some of these AR, VR technologies for training. So I think that's another opportunity for us, for an example, just to tie it to holiday as well. Yeah. We'll put people in you know, a, a, a virtual reality simulation to understand if you have never been through one, what does Black Friday look like in a Walmart super center before you confront it? And so I think there's some opportunities there where you can, <laughs> yes. you can you know, use um, that opportunity to help train your employees. How do you stock a break room? How do you do a repair? So I think that's another, another element that could be more broadly applicable for small businesses. So I have to ask both of you, best advice for small business, Kira? Two things, invest in your education, make time for it. You do not want to fall behind. It's worth the investment. Um, and the second thing, find your small business community. Go find other business owners so you're not doing this alone. There's so much to, to learn from other business owners. Um, so yeah, invest Network. in your education, find your community. 
Thank I you. would say um, to complement that, have a plan, right? You probably won't execute it, but I think that the depth of going through that thinking, picking one alternative versus another, you'll make the thing you pick better. You'll have a fallback if the first thing doesn't work out. And then when you have to pivot, you've done some of that groundwork. So make the plan, even if you don't follow it to the letter, and be prepared to pivot, which I'm guessing probably is something everybody in this room already has done a number of times. Good. That's a good note. A plan is foundational. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.